It's no surprise that Lynels are the most terrifying creatures in any Zelda game, and it's no different in Echoes of Wisdom because you can actually have a secret encounter with the Lynel at the early part of the game. Oh sh! And if you don't believe me, look at Zelda. She only has five hearts, and I literally have just acquired this Echo. Also, this is probably the biggest flex because you're going to be owning this Lynel on top of defeating it. Just one thing to note, when you acquire an Echo, doesn't mean you can use the Echo right away. This is just something that you can flex on by having it and then later on when try hits level nine you'll be able to use the lino efficiently wherever you go now this is optional and not mandatory but will help your survivability during the fight with the lino and if you did everything correctly at the start of the game where you're blocked up from the rest of the map you should have four heart pieces from the early part of the game heart piece one can be found in this location at southern beach heart piece two once you make it inside of this cave can be found right over here after Southern Beach. And then Heart Piece 3 can be found in the shop in Southern Village that you can buy for 80 rupees right over here. And also while you're at the shop, you should pick up a couple of potions because these potions will help us later on when we are fighting the Lionel as it'll keep your health up just in case you take a little bit of damage. And finally, Heart Piece 4 can be found in this cave. Once you have all four Heart Pieces, it'll then form a complete heart, giving you more health. You'll also be able to find something really important known as a fairy bottle, which is going to be located right in the back of this cave on the map. With that fairy bottle, you can then approach this pond right over here, which is going to have a respawnable fairy that can go right inside of the jar. The reason why this is going to be extremely useful is if you take damage that gets your health to zero, the fairy will immediately break out and bring your health back up and raise back your hearts. So going to be very useful if the Lino decides to come and one shot you. Now, we're going to need the map to be completely open to us so we can fully explore it. So in order to do that, we're going to have to have our tutorial dungeon finished, which of course, once you beat the boss, will give you a complete full heart, which should bring your total of hearts up to five. Also, when you beat the tutorial dungeon, try also gets another triangle, bringing its total to four, which will then allow you to echo up to four one triangle cost echoes, as opposed to the earlier three we had before defeating that dungeon. After that dungeon is complete and you finish up all the cutscenes at Blueberry's house, you'll now have access to the open world and we can head towards our destination. From Blueberry's house, you can make your way towards the left side where you can activate the first waypoint. From there, you're just going to continue straight forward into the open world area that we weren't able to access before. Now, what you want to do is make your way towards the left side where you're going to find a body of water. Within the water, you'll see a monster known as the Octo Rock, the ones that spit out rocks at you pretty much. What you want to do is take one of these out and learn their echo. The reason we're going for Octo Rocks is because they have a range attack. And because Try is able to have four triangles, we can now summon four echoes of these at once and place them in various different locations to attack the Lionel later on. Once you get your Octorox, you can head all the way back to the main path right over here. And from this point, you're just going to start walking straight just like this. Go through this section. Go all the way up here. and you're going to make your way around the left side of Hyrule Castle area. Keep going further up. Follow this pathway. Get through the Moblin Camp. From this road, you're going to keep going up, and as soon as the pathway ends, you're then going to make a hard left and arrive at this waypoint over here. You've now arrived at the Eternal Forest. From this waypoint, just follow me towards this direction here, and you're going to notice that there are footprints on the ground over here that look like the Lionel's footprints. But before we continue with anything here, we want to walk right up towards this waypoint over here and activate it. From this point, you can go look at the footprints again and see the direction that they're facing. And if you're curious, if you walk into this area right over here towards the right side, you'll see an open area. This is exactly where our Lino will spawn. But how do we exactly make it spawn? What you're going to need to do is go back to where these footprints are and we're going to walk counterclockwise, basically following these footprints and they'll start showing up as we move. So let's go counterclockwise in this direction here. And as you can see, the footprints continue to show up as you keep going in this 
specific direction. Be careful of any enemies here as there are level 2 moblins that can do a ton of damage to you. And we want to keep our health before this line will fight. Keep going around. And eventually, you'll come right back close to the original spot. But this time, you'll see footprints leading into that little secret area. If you go there and move your camera slightly forward, you should see that something is spawned there. If you think this line is cool, you need to hit that like button and subscribe button because there are a lot more cooler videos dropping. And also, hit that notification button so you know when it goes live. And the best part is, because you've done this, this is going to be an actual respawnable Lionel. So you can come back here at different points in the game and just rematch it if you want to later on. But of course, we're here to kill it for the first time in order to get the Echo. And if you're curious, later on in the game, there's actually a church that is stuck in the rift. And if you save all of Tri's friends in there, the church gets restored. And there is a specific priest inside of that church. And when you talk to the priest, you have an option to talk about a dangerous monster. And believe it or not, the priest mentions that there are footprints in the eternal forest and that, you know, you just have to follow them. And that's a hint that happens later in the game. And luckily for us, it actually works right at the start. Now, here's a big warning. Just make sure that you hard save your game before you encounter the Lino and before it attacks you. If you don't save your game, it'll completely reset you back all the way to the point where you have to go around the entire area to track the footprints again. So just make sure to save right there. Now, if you come up with your own unique strategy for how to take down this Lino, please comment it down below because I'm very excited to read what you may have all come up with. Now, before I share with you my secret strategy that I came up with to defeat the Lino, let me explain how hard this fight actually is. You see, the Lino is extremely powerful where he can one-shot you at low health and pretty much two-shot you at a higher health. If you try even running up to him to go into a 1v1 combat, you're pretty much dead as it just keeps slicing you if you're in the front. If you try to use trampolines or put yourself up in a higher location like on the trees, well, guess what? The Lino can also chase you up on the trees as well. The Lino also has an attack where he can just rush you at full speed, completely ending you with one slice. That's also a very dangerous thing. The only way to really avoid that rush attack is by jumping to a higher elevation or dropping to a lower elevation while he is attacking you. Pretty much once the Lino locks onto you and chases you, you just die. In my save file where I'm closer towards the end of the game, that's where I actually got the Lino. And the strategy I used in my overpowered save file was a Tocto Rock, which is basically the machine version of your Octo Rock. So I winded that up and had it fire while I threw out a Dark nut level three who would tank in the front while the range attack would keep going this is exactly why i told you that you should pick up octo rocks in the beginning because i noticed that something about range seems to be pretty effective while the lino is distracted on something pretty close by so in the early game save file or my new game save that i'm showing you where zelda has five hearts the strategy i came up with was to climb on top of the trees and if you notice there is a square area up here with the landmass uh, on top of the trees that you you can actually circle around and the only way that you can actually avoid the lino is by running around this entire perimeter it actually works believe it or not and the big trick that you want to do here is bait the lino towards you now as the lino comes towards you you're going to have these sections where you can actually drop octa rocks as marked by what i'm doing here so as the lino chases me in each corner i'm dropping octa rocks and then moving further down and then the lino gets shot a couple of times by all four octa rocks i keep moving around to the next corner area drop my octorox if he comes at me i just run forward turn around drop my octorox and keep going i basically repeated this process a couple of times and eventually the lino actually died which i was shocked that my level one octorox were able to do it and this was able to be done right at the start of the game and just a reminder that you own this echo but you can't use this echo until try is level nine but it's good just to have now you can subscribe and let others know that i taught you this strat if you think getting a Lionel's OP, you need to check out this video right over here and you need to get this now.